here. Um, well, this is my very first video I've ever made. I've uh, been thinking about making one for quite a while. Uh, I feel like God's really told me to make one. Uh, you know, in the Bible it does say that what the Lord uh, whispers to you at night during the day you are to go and shout it out from the basically the mountaintops. Um, okay, so I'm just going to basically tell you about a dream I had. Um, I thought that I was perfectly saved. I thought that I had done everything and was living the right way. I thought I was I had done everything right and that I was living the right way. I thought that <laughs> this was a done deal. It was a sealed deal and I knew I was saved. I knew that I knew that I knew that I knew. You know, couldn't have told me any different. <sighs> okay, so, well, the Lord had different plans for me. I went to bed one night and this is about a year and a half ago. Okay, so today's like, what, March, I mean, uh, June, though. First, night, uh, 2018, so about a year and a half ago, I had this dream. Uh, you know, went to bed, minding my own business, just going to bed like I do every night. And, uh, well, uh, just tell you about the dream, just jump right into it. Okay, so uh, I was in this, this giant, giant lake, very, very big lake. And I was driving a bright yellow, like a racing boat. Now, it wasn't really like those cigarette boats or the cigar boats, whatever they call them. I don't know what they call them, but this was a, like a, it was a big boat, but I was standing in it. I was standing up driving it. I was standing driving it. And I was going so fast on this lake. And there was, there was no wakes. There was no nothing. Uh, I could just go as fast as I wanted with nothing to slow me down. My my hair was just blowing in the wind. I mean, it was just, I was just I was just going. Well, now I am the one driving the boat, and in my dream, uh, I'm like watching myself in this dream. I don't know. I had explained it to you. Okay, it's like I, the boats in the lake down here. And I could see myself. I was up here, and I could just see myself driving this boat. I could actually watch what was going on. I watched myself driving this boat. My hair flying in the wind. But there was somebody standing right beside me somebody was standing right beside me and I couldn't see their face their face was just shiny it was bright and shiny so I could not see the face what they were wearing was a white gown or robe I just caught like a gown type thing I don't know it's all white but the face of this person I could not see like I said it was all bright and shiny okay so like I said, I'm driving the boat as fast as I can. I am just going about my business. I'm having a great time. I just know I'm loving this, right? And here's this person sitting beside, standing beside me, and they keep reaching over. Every once in a while, they'll reach over, and they'll just very gently touch my boat. I mean, my, my steering wheel. Just like very gently just reach over and try to touch my steering wheel. Literally not trying to grab it out of my hands or take control or anything like that. It was nothing like that. It was a very gentle reaching over and touching my steering wheel. Every time that person did that, I said, stop it. What are you doing? This is my boat. This is my boat. I know how to drive my boat, and I want it to go fast, and I know how to drive it. But this person kept every, so, every, every once in a while, very gently, so softly, reaching over to grab, you know, to, to touch my steering wheel. And every time, like I said, just smack them off, smack them off. No, no, no. Okay, well, so this happened about four times. All of a sudden, and I do mean all of a sudden, all of a sudden. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to try to explain it the best way I can. All of a sudden, in this giant lake, all of a sudden there was a, like this concrete, it's kind of like a wall. Okay, you know, like on an overpass, you've got your, your dirt built up here and your dirt built here, and then you've got your bridge here. And then underneath this dirt that's built, they've got this concrete. So it's all built up here to keep the, the land from sliding down so it can hold up the bridge. All of a sudden, this concrete wall thing, or whatever you want to call it, was right there in the middle of the lake. I smashed right through it. Bam! I mean, it was just like, all of a sudden, I'm going like 150 miles an hour on a boat. All of a sudden, smash right straight through this concrete barrier. Instantaneously, I was dead. Instantly, I was killed. And instantly... I went straight to hell. Instantly, I was in this place. 
I'll just try. I'll try to describe it for you as best I can. It had dark colors. It's kind of like a cave. Just rocks. Um, big gray. Lots of dark grays, light grays, and black colors. It was just a place where I didn't want to be. I knew it was a place that was not supposed to be. And within probably just maybe two seconds of being there, I heard from back behind here. Now, when, okay, when I went in there, when, as soon as I smashed through the thing, I, that's where I smashed into was into this place. And um, <clears throat> I saw no one. I didn't see no smoke. I didn't see no fire. I didn't see anything like that. Okay? All I saw was this dark gray cave surrounding me. But from back behind me was coming something. It was it was something ho so horrendous and it was awful. It was growling. It was the most horrendous, deep, guttural, wanted to shred me to pieces growl I've ever heard. And I'm going to tell you something. It scared me so bad. And God had the mercy just to only let me hear that voice because I'm going to tell you now, if I had seen it, I probably would have did. I could have died right there in my dream. I don't know, but that's how I felt. But, okay, so instantly when I heard that, that thing kept coming closer and closer and closer. And when it got to about right here, right by me, all that could come out of my voice was a squeak. I'm telling you a squeak of Jesus, the name Jesus. It just barely came out. Like, Jesus, that's all that would come out. And instantly, I tell you, instantly, I was taken out of there. And instantly, I woke up. Instantly, from coming out, I came out, and instantly, I was awake. And instantly, I remembered my dream. And instantly, I had the revelation. God revealed the meaning of everything to me. It's a pretty straightforward dream, right? So it's not too hard to understand, right, guys? Everybody understands, I'm sure, right now, before I even explain to you. So, the man standing in the boat, that was Jesus. And what do you think he was doing every time he went over to go touch my steering wheel? That boat represented my life that I was in control of, that I didn't want to let him take control of. Every time, he kept gently, not forcing me, not taking it from me. He tried so many times, gave me so many chances to let him be the driver of my life, the driver of my boat, you know? He didn't want to be a co-pilot. That, that man standing right there in that boat by me was not trying to be my co-pilot. He wanted to be the pilot, but no, because I know better. It was my life. You know, I like going fast. I like doing my own thing. Nope, I didn't want to give it to him. And it got me put in hell. But by the grace of the Lord, it was only a dream. And that was a year and a half ago. And that dream was the start of my walk. And let me tell you something, it's been a long journey. That's only been a year and a half, but that was a long, hard walk to get back into the arms of Jesus. And it don't just take one day, guys. I don't care what anybody says. It takes a, you know, to make, to make you walk a straight path and to walk in, to walk in it every day. It's a journey, man. It's a journey, guys. It's not something that can just, you know, it's, it's walking, it's falling down, and it's getting back up again. The Bible doesn't it say, although the righteous may fall seven times, but they'll still get up. I'm going to keep getting up. I'm going to keep on walking. Okay, so the point of me giving you this video is because... Like I said at the beginning, I thought that my life was fine. I had always been reading the Bible, praying, you know, doing this. But while I was doing those things, I was living my own life. I wasn't taking into consideration what, what God wanted me to do, what was right, what was wrong, what, you know. I just thought, oh, you do you, and if you're happy, it's fine. No, that is what the, that's what the world wants you to believe. 
And I'm going to tell you something. That thinking will get you straight to hell. I'm going to tell you something. God gave us commandments to live by for a reason. For a reason. Th those, those things are supposed to help us get through our walk in life. The way God wants us to. Not the way we want to. But I just thought I'd, you know, put this video out there so maybe it could just help one person, please. Just just one person. I hope it can help. And just please, if you don't know Jesus, if you're kind of like wondering, oh, is he real? Is he this or that? All I can do is call out to him. Call out to him. He'll answer you. He's right there. God wishes none should perish. None. Why you think he gave me the dream? I didn't ask for the dream. I was living my life every day just like I had always been. Thought it was fine. And then what happened? Well, he showed me where I was going to end up if I kept on thinking that way. Kept living that way. So anyway, um, I know Jesus is coming back soon. I'll be probably making some more videos because I have got a story of my life. I'm going to tell you. Oh my gosh. From very young, being attacked by Satan himself, I'm telling you now, the things in my life that I have put myself through, I self-inflicted my own wounds. I'm not talking about physically, I'm talking about spiritually. And it, and it gave me so many problems in my life, but I'm going to try to break them down into like each short story, like a short clip, so that the videos aren't long or something like that. Uh, so hopefully maybe some people can maybe learn from my, uh, I won't call them mistakes because they weren't mistakes. They were intended choices. <laughs> they were, they were choices. They weren't mistakes. All right. But, um, just so that you know, you know, Jesus loves you all. He wants, um, none to perish. He died on the cross for you. He is alive. He is living, um, he just wants so much to come into your life and just fill you up. He wants to fill you up with every bit of his goodness that he has. If you'll just let him. So, uh, thanks for watching and I hope to come back again soon. Thank you.